So I noticed that some of our AFC people here from Utah have already heard about this story. It's really wild. A lot of people involved, but even more so, I think the faith-based association that is associated with this man and with this family makes this even more heinous. But before I give into the details, before I get into the details, what I'm trying to say, let me give you guys a disclaimer so you'll be well aware of what type of content I'm going to be bringing. Some viewers may find the following content offensive and controversial. The information in this video comes from multiple sources, including court records, official police charges, news web articles, and interviews. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of this story. The point is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing tragedies like these to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. Yes, indeed. So again, Utah is going to take an L. And I haven't really given Utah a lot of L's, but let's talk about this. First of all, when I read that this man and this family are Mormons. I'm not really familiar with Mormon. I know it's a a religious section of religion. Is that the way you say it? I don't know how, how you say that. But it says that Mormons are a religious and cultural group. There you go. Related to Mormonism, Mormonism, whatever that is. The principal branch of Latter-day Saints movement started by Joseph Smith in upstate New York during the 1820s. I'm not so sure. Let me see. What is a Mormon? What do they believe? So Mormons are a religious group that embrace the concepts of Christianity as well as revelations made by their founder, Joseph Smith. They primarily belong to the church, the, the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I remember they used to have this commercial. Maybe some of y'all ain't as old as me, but I remember they used to come on and they were trying to sell their Bible. Y'all remember when they used to run those infomercials, those big dollar infomercials, they would always run real late at night. The, the book of Jesus, the church of Latter-day Saints or whatever that is, however they used to say that. I was like, what is the book of Mormon? Like, what the heck is that? Like, it was like some new stuff they came out with. Like, I never heard of it. I thought it was wild. But nonetheless, the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or LSDs or LDS, excuse me, not L uh, LSD, LDS which is headquartered in Salt Lake City, Utah, and has more than 16 million members worldwide. So I think people in Utah are more familiar with this than anybody else. So let's talk about this story coming from Daily Mail. Thank you for the article. So a Mormon family, including five children, so that would be husband, wife, and five children, which is a total of seven people. All of them were found shot dead in their rural Utah home by a family patriarch on Tuesday. The children's father then turned the gun on himself. So this was a murder-suicide. And that's why I continue to keep saying that abuse doesn't have a specific face. That's probably going to be my theme for 2023. Abuse does not wear a specific face. You see this family and you don't immediately think abusive, violent, dangerous husband, psychopath. None of those things come up. They're in the church, look like a happy family, they dress well, but what does that mean when they're all dead? That means absolutely nothing, okay? This man decided that he was gonna end all of their lives on top of ending himself. And I'm just thinking like, why not start with yourself first, right? Anybody else under kind of understand where I'm coming from? If you're gonna do this to your wife and your children, how about you do it to yourself first and then you can worry about, oh, that's right, because you wouldn't be able to do nothing to them if you did it to yourself first. See how that works out? You see how selfishness works out? You could have just let them go about with what they were doing, and you could have just walked out the picture or walked off the proverbial cliff. The bodies of Michael, age 42, Tasha Height, H-A-I-G-H-T, 40 years old, and their five children, Tasha's mother, Gail, 78 years old, were found on Wednesday in the town of Enoch with gunshot wounds. And I hope I pronounced that city correctly. If I didn't, I'm sorry. The children were only identified as three daughters, ages 17, 12, and 7, and two sons, ages 7 and 4. Police have called 
been called to their home to perform a welfare check by other family members. I'm sure they tried to get in touch with them. There's a lot of people involved there. It was later revealed that the massacre occurred shortly after Tasha filed for divorce from her husband. Rewind. Let me say that again because I've said that in previous stories and I'm going to say it again. Abuse does not wear a specific face. She filed for divorce and you would have to ask yourself a pertinent question. Why was she filing for divorce? But then again, I don't understand why people get this far. You wait, you feel like, I'm assuming if you're Mormons, I'm assuming y'all believe in some level of Christianity. So you probably waited to have sex, waited to get into a family, waited to have children until you had a job and stability and a, and a marriage. You did everything right. So why would you want to leave? Here's my thing. I personally believe that people don't dig deeper than the surface of dealing with a person when it comes to relationships. I'm not a relationship expert, but I feel like there are some things that I'm that I know that we're doing wrong in general, not all and not necessarily saying them. He could have just flat out snapped. But I believe that before we have children, we have to get real deep with people. We have to ask very vital questions. We have to know what makes a person tick. We have to know if they have violent tendencies, if so, where those violent tendencies are before we have children. Because the thing is, and maybe this couldn't have been prevented, but I use these stories as cautionary tales because I talk about this hoping that maybe it won't save this family. But maybe it might save somebody else's family. So I hope y'all catch that. This ain't for them. They aren't here with us. This is not going to benefit them at all. They're going to have to plan for a buttload of funerals. But this might be able to save someone else who might be getting engaged for somebody who might be falling in love. So for somebody who might be dating Please do as best as you can just because you see somebody in the church, just because you see somebody with a high position of power in a job, just because you meet a doctor or just because you meet a manager or just because you meet somebody that seems to have a lot of ambition and drive to make and earn money and promise you that they're going to be a good provider and a good husband does not make them a suitable candidate to not only be your husband, but be, to be a father to children. I honestly believe there had to have been some red flags, some yellow flags somewhere. It's just my personal opinion. Please don't get mad about that. There had to have been something about this man that let you know, oh, he might be a few short screws, a few screws short. I said that backwards. A little dyslexic. He might be a couple of tacos short of a combination plate. This man might be just a little bit on the thug side. He, you know, you put up that, that, that Christian cloak, that Mormon cloak. And, and you know how many times that people are in the church, but they're out doing the wildest things at home and in the streets. Don't live by that Bible at all. So you just got to be careful. That's really all you can do. It was later revealed that the massacre occurred shortly after his wife filed for divorce from her husband. Until last week, Michael had been working as an insurance agent for Allstate. Well, that's Allstate, Stan. Isn't that something? I'm sure Allstate would rather have not known that y'all put it out there that that's where he worked at. A statement from Enoch City Manager Rob Dotson identified Michael Height as the only suspect in the crime. Dotson said, while this intensive investigation is ongoing, investigators currently believe that there are no suspects outstanding. Evidence suggests that the suspect took his own life after killing seven others in the home. The suspect is 42-year-old Michael Height. Let me get this off my screen. Let's keep going. Online records show that Michael Height worked as an insurance agent for Allstate. I don't know why they put that company name out there, but Allstate, I guess y'all got some splaining to do. 
Maybe y'all, y'all, what, what is that, 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 uh, that personality assessment test that y'all, you know, that they make y'all do before you can work at a company. I wonder how well he did on that assessment. He worked as an insurance agent for Allstate and then, and that's according to uh, Daily Mail. So if that's wrong, I'm sorry. That's according to Daily Mail, not my words. And he ran a financial services benef- uh, business out, out of the family's home along North Albert Drive in Enoch. Fox Salt, Lady City, Fox Salt Lake City reports that Michael had recently left his job at the insurance giant. The station also noted that Tasha filed for divorce on December the 21st. Four days before Christmas. That's colder than the weather. Right before Christmas, too. Just, oof. James Park, who represented Tasha Height in the divorce case, says she had not expressed any fear that her husband would physically hurt her, but he declined to elaborate, citing the investigation into the killings. Park said he only met with her twice, most recently on Tuesday, and said that she was an incredibly nice lady. In a press conference, Dotson said that the authorities entered the home around 4 p.m. on January the 4th. The alarm was first raised when Tasha did not show up to an appointment, Dotson said. At the same press conference, the town's mayor, Jeffrey Chestnut, said through, through tears that he was a neighbor of the Height family and that their children play in his yard. Officials say that the family was known to law enforcement, oh, was known to law enforcement and that they only had been to the home previously for unspecified reasons. I'm sure that has to do with the investigation. So that'll probably come out later. None of those visits occurred recently. Neighbors of the family told KSL that they were active in the town's Mormon community and described them as very welcoming. Tasha's Facebook page is littered with images of her family. The most recent shows her with her husband in June of 2022. Her, her mother, Gail, lived with the family. Her husband, Boy J. Earl, died in 2020 at the age of 77. He was a veteran of Desert Storm, and shout out to all of our veterans out there if you guys are listening, and was a Green Beret, according to his obituary. A neighbor, Tina Brown, told the, told the news, Tasha was the most kind and generous person, and she was never and she never said anything ill about anyone. She would give the shirt off her back for anyone, and she served people tirelessly. While another neighbor, Tom, De- Tom DeVille, told the station, I just feel terrible. They were really nice people. Uh, let's keep going. I can skip some of that. Archives from the local news show that Height's first birthday was commemorated with an announcement in the local newspaper in 1981 alongside a baby picture of him laughing. He was a, he was in Boy Scouts as a young boy and earned the Faith in God Award as a fourth grader. Two years later, in 1992, another newspaper article showed that he had won a Gospel in Action Award, won a Gospel in Action Award from his church. He is pictured again in the newspaper in 1998 when he was a finalist for the academic award in high school for business and marketing. After high school, he was served a church mission. He, he served a church mission in Brazil and then married Tasha at a church temple in St. George in 2003. She was, she was from uh, Overton, Nevada, just located two hours south of Cedar City, where he grew up. Dotson earlier said that uh, earlier said that the community was sent reeling by the news of eight bodies and that the deceased, all m- members of the one family, were well known to the southern Utah town. I can skip some of that as well. Welfare checks usually take place when neighbors raise concerns or when individuals have not been seen for an extended period of time. The five children attended schools in the Iron County School District in Cedar City, according to officials. The letter posted in the schools, I think I can skip some of this also. I don't know why it's telling about the school enrollment. Why does that even matter? Let's go ahead and skip some of that. Let me give you guys the fair usage. I'm going to talk about the couple of news videos that are here. Here we go. Let's get it.
Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. To be honest, I have no idea why we needed to know how many children are enrolled in their school i think that was a bit odd but nonetheless if y'all would do me a favor especially in honor of those children the memory of this family do us a favor and please click that thumbs up and share this video so more people can see this story talk about it leave a comment let me know what you guys think okay here we go we want to return you now back to our top story tonight horrific breaking news in iron county Eight people, five of which were children, were found dead inside a home in Enoch earlier this afternoon. Police tell us all of the victims suffered gunshot wounds. The scene is in the 4900 block of North Albert Drive. Fox 13 News reporter Chris Arnold arrived on scene just minutes ago. Chris, what have you learned? Well, yeah, good evening, Bob and Kelly. Yeah, we just arrived here in the past 15 minutes. And as you can see here behind me, still a pretty active scene as police have the entryway onto North Albert Drive at Saddleback View Drive blocked off right now as they work to investigate and figure out exactly what took place here earlier today. Now, what we do know right now is police were called to the home for a welfare check earlier today. And when they arrived, they found eight people dead inside this Enoch City home. Now, three of those people have been confirmed to be adults. The other five five are children. Now, police haven't said at this time if all eight people are immediate family or not. Now, the news hitting pretty hard for this tight knit community of about 6,000 people tonight. We spoke with a neighbor who has lived here for about eight months who says the family were really nice people and that their kids were heavily involved in sports in the community. Now, they and even police out here tonight are just left in shock with what has taken place inside of this home. I just feel horrible. I mean, they were just really nice people. And I, I mean, it's going to be one of those things that who, who knows. This is not normal. This is not something that happens um, often at all. And in a small community in rural Utah, um, we're, we're all family. And so this affects everybody. And everybody has some connection to the individuals and some connections to the family. If you guys would do me a favor, if you're listening, we want to have at least one thumb up for everybody watching to share in the memory of these children, to share in the memory of this family. Y'all would do me a favor and hit that thumbs up. Look at how many people are watching. Hit that thumbs up. We want to try to bring that number up just a hair, okay, so more people can see it. Well, at this time, police have not released the names, ages, or even genders of the victims involved in this incident. They did say they do not believe there's a threat to the public or that any suspects are at large at this time. Now, right now, Enoch City Police and Cedar City Police, along with the Iron County Sheriff's Office, they're out here behind me right now investigating, trying to come up with some sort of answers here tonight. And when speaking with the, the Enoch City PIO earlier tonight, he said they might not be able to come up with all of the answers about why this incident even took place. For now, live in Enoch, Chris Arnold, Fox 13 News, Utah. Chris, is there any indication that police or other authorities have visited this house for any reason in the past? Again, so, so for the people who are asking and want to know what the motive was, the motive is that she was divorcing him. That's it. Divorce. He felt that his entire family needed to die because she wanted to separate her life from his. That's it. Divorce. Something that trivial and maybe even not, not maybe it's not that simple. Like I said, I mean, I'm divorced, but I've been divorced, what, 12 years now? I couldn't imagine wanting to go, you know, hurt. My ex-wife, the kids, myself, because we needed to separate or she decided I'm not for her anymore. She needs to move on for whatever reason. But I would I would love for the details in that divorce. Um, what is it? A divorce decree? Is that what it is? Whatever she was asking for in that divorce, I would love to know what those details are, because if we don't have that, we really don't know how to posture this story posture that's a big word for me but to posture this story because 
how do we teach from this if we don't know the full details? I, like, uh, like I said, I mean, that might be only privy to the lawyer. And now that they are passed away, we might not ever actually find out. We might not ever find out why they were getting a divorce. He took the life of everybody that could have told us. Yeah, and, and speaking with police briefly, Bob, we haven't been able to, to confirm if they have been out to this home before or have known or been involved with this family at any time before this latest incident here tonight. Chris, I can see the flashing lights behind you. Still a very active scene. And I know you haven't been in that community very long tonight. You just arrived about 15 minutes ago. But what's your initial impression or have you seen any neighbors come out? As we mentioned, I mean, people are in absolute shock. Oh, yeah. This is a very small, tight-knit community. What's the feeling there? Well, well both Kelly and Bob, I can tell you, been, I've been looking down each side of the street here, and it's just incredibly quiet at this time of night. I know in speaking with some people on our way up here via social media, whether it was Facebook, Twitter, or whatnot tonight, a lot of people just incredibly devastated. Some people I spoke with even said they knew the family involved here tonight and just said they were in complete shock. They were devastated. They, they really didn't have much words for what took place here tonight, still trying to grasp everything that has happened here. Chris, a lot of times in situations like this, information is what dispels not only fear, but anxiety as well. Uh, have police said that they're going to come out and brief reporters at any point tonight or maybe even in the morning? Now, from what we gathered from when we spoke with a, a PIO earlier tonight, uh, they said that they would be updating us, I believe, tomorrow morning and, and giving us some more details uh, about this incident. But uh, at this moment, unsure what those details will be as, as, as again, police out here tonight. This might be silent. We might At this time, we don't believe there's a threat to the public. Um, the investigation is, of course, ongoing with uh, law enforcement, and we'll go continue to go on until um, there's some more information to give out. Which the the feelings that are happening right now are nobody can describe what they are for those family members, uh, friends, neighbors. There's no words to describe what it feels like to this community. We got a lot of music playing in the background. I know YouTube don't like us playing folks' music. But again, it seems like the majority of what this happened for was predicated on the divorce. If that was simply the reason he did this, I just think it's a very, very shameful thing. I know he was probably emotional, definitely not thinking rationally. Some people in the chat even, I saw the word um, narcissist in the chat. I'm not so sure that that term fits this. I mean, I get why you say it, but I do know that it can, that divorce can be devastating. It can be emotional. It can make you think some very wild things. I think counseling before you get married, while you're married, and even if you're getting a divorce, I think um, having a counselor is important. If they had that, I'm sure if they were in the church, they had access to that. Seems like they needed a a lot more than that. I don't know, but it's just a really tragic situation. But if there was more going on, and this is why I believe that we need to have more of an open dialogue about what's really going on with this violence. Why are these things happening? Why are these people doing this? We need some real answers because I believe that's the only way that we can fix problems is if we identify what the problem is, which is the first rule of troubleshooting because that's the world I used to come from. But nonetheless, R.I.P. to that family, except the husband. So R.I.P. to everybody except the husband. How about that? But thank you guys so much for listening. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment in the comment section and post it in there. Okay, thank you.